What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. If you guys haven't seen the previous video already, I installed a little hidden Bluetooth radio. It has no buttons. All the functions are with my phone. I bought another product from them, as I mentioned in the previous video. I bought this ghost box uh, a little bit before Thanksgiving, and on Thanksgiving Day, they had a Black Friday sale. They have one sale a year, and that's only for Black Friday. Normally, this kit is like 139 shipped. This is Black Friday. I got it for 119 shipped, and this is the same price as well. Yeah, caught every year they have one sale a year, so you better take advantage of that. All their kits are plug and play, which is the huge plus to this company. But as you guys see by the title of this video, we're gonna be upgrading the RA1. I have a 1996, obviously back then, during those years, during those times, uh, cars didn't come with a push to start. So the thing I like about this van is I like how the ignition is right here instead of on the little clamshells or whatever. Yeah, this is gonna look really OEM, super hype. As I mentioned before, this is a plug and play kit. There is going to be a little spicing needed, but it's just to tap into the brake uh, harness so it can function with the push start. It's really simple. You're not really doing anything crazy, but I'm going to flip this camera. I'm recording on the phone again, just like the previous video. Ghost Key by JDI, Jordan Distributors Inc. I'll leave all their info down below in the description. This is the push to start kit. This is the button, what I'm gonna be installing today. You can upgrade if you want. I think the buttons are like $8. They have silver, red. They have ones that have LEDs that can light up red or blue. I think this from the factory, it's the black button. And I think from the factory, like around the button, it lights up blue. And all their harnesses are pretty long, so you don't have to worry about like running out of space or buying anything extra hello really oem so i'm gonna set this to the side this is the main harness we're going to plug into for the ignition like i said everything's plug and play this is the box that functions everything and you can mount it wherever you want we're going to get into that later on in the video so i'm gonna set these two to the side here we got the push start the box and the main ignition uh harness and then this is i want to say this is like the reader to read all this because it's not just press the button and whatnot and go and then this is what we're going to be tapping into the brake harness it's really simple all the stuff is included if you don't trust my video you can watch their video there's their website and i'm pretty sure they have their youtube and whatnot on here too as well here is the ghost key or the ghost card i should say and then right here is the two little keychain things that go on your key fob or it's basically the key fob so you got to scan something you got to scan this card and then press the brake and then press the start button and then your car should turn on and off this is just a little promotion thing that was also in the box same thing that they included in this so i'm not going to go over that that's all the product things that are in the box and then you also have the user manual to tell you how to do everything as well and then you have their card with their info on it. Like I said, I'll leave all their links in the description. And then they gave me two stickers again, like they did with the ghost box over there. I already have this removed from when I installed their ghost box. So I didn't put that back because I knew I was getting this in the mail soon. But to remove this little panel down here, it's literally, I just yank from the left side and then disconnect the, the lights for this. And then it should be held together with, I want to say it was two Phillips. So one right here and one right here. I think I was missing one. Now that that piece is taken out, we can take out this little metal bracket that goes all the way around and these are 10 millimeter bolts and there's four of them so two on the left side and two on the right and then that'll give us all the exposure to the harnesses i'm gonna go ahead and grab 10 mil so i'm gonna do this off camera that's what it looks like with that little bracket removed our next step we're gonna do is we're gonna need a phillips and we're gonna take off this little clamshell so these are two separate pieces and then it should give us access to the ignition but i think for this i want to say there's like two or maybe four phillips under here some of this figured out off camera so i took this little plastic piece off right here i don't think you need to take it off but you can if you want but i think i'm missing screws from when i did this steering wheel install but there's going to be two phillips right here and then one down here and then there's also going to be two more phillips that are really deep in there in this hole right here so one on this side and one on this side right here and then this should free up this right here. It kind of took me a minute to figure out. Yeah, it's a little better. So I'm gonna try this with one hand. Uh, there's a little harness right here. 
I'm gonna try to see if I can disconnect it or keep it. I don't know how. This little top piece is gonna stay. Uh, let me see, figure this out. I managed to disconnect this piece. So this little wire is gonna be a little gray connector and it's literally right here. Not sure if I needed to remove that top one, but still it's easy enough to take off to get out of the way. And this just requires a little bit of wiggle because it's stuck on this ignition. And we're gonna figure this out because now we have to remove this original one. I've ran into an issue. I'm not sure if it's something wrong with my car or if they just sent a wrong harness, but this harness does not fit where the OEM one does. It won't go into the OEM slot. I've reached out and I've emailed them and asked them some questions and sent them a bunch of pictures. It's probably something wrong on their end because it's color coded like OEM and the only brown wire down there, it does not fit. And I compared the plugs and they look just alike. It is going to be this plug right here and it does not fit right here. It's it looks orange right here but it's really brown it is a new day i forgot to mention in the previous clips before you do any of this you want to make sure your battery is disconnected so negative goes off first positive off second before you go to unplugging harnesses and splicing into some wires and i've got another email from jdi they reached back out to me after i emailed them and i was plugging it into the wrong harness or i was trying to plug it into the wrong harness uh, so you want to plug that one harness into the actual fuse box and i'm going to show you guys that right now when i get this flashlight <laughs> So what you're plugging it into is this one. It is brown too. I had the little panel on before, so I wasn't able to see it, um, but I still would have been confused. I got the OEM harness out. Here it is right here. It's all routed up to right here. Here's what we're looking like right now. There's the JDI harness. And then now attached to that JDI harness is going to be this. And we're gonna use this for a ground. Anywhere where you can find a screw, it doesn't matter. It just has to be by itself in order for it to work. Figured out where I was gonna ground it to. So as you guys can see there's the harness and here is the ground wire uh, whatever that is that's where i grounded it up at this box right here by jdi i gotta figure out where to lay it out or whatever somewhere hidden most of this stuff plugs straight into this box so i'm assuming that's the factory uh this white one will go right here kind of working ahead so i have my piece where the original ignition would be right here just feed that wire through and uh, if you need to, you can bend the tabs. You wanna make sure the tabs go on the back of this panel right here. And then once you get it all behind the panel, you can go ahead, bend them to secure it. It should look like that. And then uh, there's our product right here. So that's where our push start is gonna be. I have a 96 RA1. So the brake switch wire that we're gonna be splicing into is going to be right here. If you see your brake, follow that up and your brake switch will be right here. The wire we're gonna be splicing into is this green and white one. It's like a dark green with the white. You guys can see a pretty good angle right here. This is what they provided. We're just gonna crimp that wire on that green and white one and push down real tight. If you need to, you can use a pair of pliers to crimp down, but I'm pretty sure we might be able to do it with our finger. To make things easier, uh, you can disconnect this harness for the brake to have more room, wiggle room, but that's already crimped on there. The next thing you need to do is grab this orange and purple harness. Uh, my luck, these wires are twisted with these little cable tie things and I used some cutters to cut it and I accidentally cut this purple wire so i'm gonna have to do some more splicing you guys don't have to do this it's just my mistake i'm an idiot sure uh i do that this little piece right here is gonna plug into what we just crimped into if you look onto that brown piece there's gonna be a slot for this to slide through it's really thin and it'll make contact we'll be able to move on to the next step if you see that's where we crimped into the brake switch and then there's that orange harness that plugs right on the end once that is plugged into the brake switch then you go to all the way to the end and then you want to plug it into this box. What harness do we have next? I think we have this antenna. You can find somewhere to mount where you want to mount it. I think I'm going to mount it at the bottom of that right there. That way that will plug in right here on this side of the box. So you guys can figure out where you want to mount your antenna. You can mount it at the top of the clamshell, the bottom, or just anywhere where you feel safe because you're going to be scanning the ghost key on the antenna because it's an RFID. So you're going to have to scan it and then press the start like the brake and then the start and then the car will turn on. This video is kind of all over the place. I didn't really think this through. So before I can even install this antenna, I'm going to have to remove the ignition. But we're going to need to chisel off because it's not going to be a Phillips or a bolt. It's going to be a tamper-proof screw, meaning it don't have a head to it. I'm going to need like a flathead or a chisel to do this off. I'm going to show you guys where that tamper-proof screw is. Here is the ignition right here. If you follow it down, 
kind of right right here if you look up above that let me get the flashlight there'll be this little boat right here right here there'll be this boat on the other side this gold screw will be the tamper-proof screw it's kind of hard to get the angle and show you guys what it looks like or there's the angle right here you see what i mean you gotta find a spot and chisel it into it and try to remove it this is kind of a hard step right here this is so hard it was a damn daylight when i was beating on this and showing y'all the first time but it don't matter how it turns out to look because you're not gonna be able to reuse this so beat the living hell out of this bolt right here i got it cracked a little bit loose but i don't know it's just an awkward angle there's no space for you to do this like it's all the way in the back for egs and eks it's at the very top and it's really simple it's late i managed to get the ignition cylinder out uh here's the end of the harness i was into the fuse and this was another harness to be honest i don't know what this is for but it was connected of this so i disconnected it now we're gonna figure out if we did this right once we plug everything up i'll show you guys the next step i'm not gonna put everything back together like panel wise but i will wire everything up we'll test it here's the antenna the antenna connects to the box as well and this wire right here is the push to start button which is over there as you guys can see i gotta connect the battery again and i'm gonna try to start the car with this button right here once i connect the battery if this button has power right here then that means i did my job correct and once we see that we have power and lights we'll go ahead and hit the brake and tap that button and see if the car starts have my key scan the antenna it'll beep twice and then we'll go ahead and hit the start button Press it again. I honestly don't know how to work this yet. That might be accessory mode. Or I think I had something disconnected right here. I'm an idiot. I think it was because this little white plug right here wasn't connected. So let's go ahead and grab this antenna again. Let me go ahead and verify everything. I don't know if I took out this harness meant anything. Let me see what this harness is. All right, let's try this one more time. I think I got this figured out. I didn't have the brake switch connected. Oh yeah, we got it. So I think it was already on accessory mode, which is why it didn't like scan. But as you guys can see, the car is idling now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. Maybe I have to go ahead and hit the brake and then hit stop. All this stuff is working. I'm gonna go ahead and hook all this back together, zip tie everything and find a spot for this box. And then I will resume the video and show you guys how it looks with the end result. The hardest part is removing that tamper proof screw. I broke a screwdriver and I didn't even get it off with the chisel or the screwdriver and the hammer. Like I literally took bolt cutters to it <laughs> and I snapped it off and I bent the hell out of that bracket and I had to like beat the shit out of the ignition cylinder. I had to hammer it towards the passenger side and then it finally came undone. That bolt is on there tight as hell i was literally hammering that thing for like an hour and it wasn't even moving before i put this completely all back together i have all the harnesses zip tied so it's not hanging and i have the jdi box i have it self-tapped to that bracket that was held with four 10 millimeter bolts and then now i'm trying to figure out a place to mount this antenna thought i'd share where i mounted this box out to help you guys out trying to make this look oem and clean as possible it is the next day it's almost five o'clock in the morning i gotta go to work i mounted the antenna under the steering column kind of on the bottom of this clamshell so if you go ahead and scan it it'll beep there's the beep if you don't hit the brake and hit it once it's like turning the key once as you see everything's about to turn on there's the ghost box chiming in if i hit it again that's accessory mode so i can open the windows open the sunroof turn the radio on or whatever and then if i hit it again that cancels it so i'm gonna go ahead and put the steering wheel back on and then I think hit the brake, hit the star button because it's already lit up, hit it once, and it'll turn the car on. After a certain amount of seconds, it disengages the ignition or whatever, and you might have to scan your key again and uh, hit the brake and then hit the button. But this kit is really, really good. And it was really simple to install other than the tamper-proof screw. I'll show you guys in better daylight once I get off work. But there's the view of it at night. It looks really cool. That's what it looks like all the time with the white ring and the red lights. I really wasn't a fan of it because I thought it was blue. But I guess the video I watched was really old. And uh, this is their updated button like from the factory when you buy the kit. kind of flows with the car. I thought it wouldn't because I really wanted the silver one to match the car. I may still get that. I'm not sure because it ain't too hard to switch out at all. Like, like I said, everything with this kit is really simple.
So here is another day. I keep on forgetting to finish the ending of this video. I broke some tabs, I think from when I did this serum install or I didn't break them, my homie did. And I kind of made them worse when I did this install. But here is the button in the daytime. To start your car, you would scan it, foot on the brake. You see it lit up and you press it once, press it. You just press it, you don't gotta hold it. You can hold it if it takes a long time, like your car takes a long time to start with just tapping it once. And then, uh, yeah, that works. She's going crazy. How about, how about, what are you doing? <laughs> I think it stops recording and, and trips because the ghost box connects. But yeah, to shut it off, all you have to do is put on the brake and hit stop. And that turns off the car just like that. I'm really happy with the kit. I haven't had any issues ever since I installed it from the very beginning of this video. I started up first try every time, no hesitation. And that's even when I accidentally cut the wire and had to resplice it myself. It's kind of ghetto. I might hate that I did that to myself, but eventually I'm gonna get yeah, a couple more items from them. Of course, I'll make an install video. The last time you guys seen her, she was like five months or maybe even younger, which is crazy. Um, I got my wheel back there because that shit has to get re-welded. Oh. But when I DB'd, I think I DB'd like three times. Uh, one of the times I DB'd, uh, it cracked the wheel and bent it a little bit and it's now not holding air. And then now I have, I guess the second time or third time, whenever I DB'd, I did another wheel as well and it's starting to lose air. It's holding air, but it, it loses every few days. I have to fill it up and it ain't holding like it should. Yeah, that one reloaded as well. I don't know if that one's bent, but I know for sure the one in the back is. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to buy a whole new inner barrel yeah inner barrel or just get it reloaded because the prices right now are crazy i don't know if it's inflation or just that one dude i got a quote off of but hell no i might as well buy a new barrel for that i think you quoted me like 165 to reweld it and then like 65 to fix the bend and that just ain't it uh, well? yeah but yeah that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for today's video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time